sometimes I consider myself American, but because the country keeps denying me of that right, I am back to not being from here, not being fully Mexican because I'm not there. I don't share a lot of the you know, things that I'm missing out in back home. So I guess that sometimes I just feel like I'm in that gray area of not knowing what to call myself, but just knowing that I belong, I feel that I belong here. The first documentary we produced is called Living Undocumented High School, College, and Beyond. It came out of a professional development series we were doing for the New York City Department of Education, where we did one day where we brought in a panel of undocumented students, and um, the DOE hired a filmmaker to record it. And after the event, he came up to me. It was actually a few days after May Day, where he had been to a march. And he said, you know, I was really touched by this, and I would love to work with you and create something else. Um, his name was Ben Dinellen, and we've now collaborated on three documentaries. And what we decided was we got together with some students who um, were undocumented and said, like, what is something you would like a film about? What's something that could be helpful? At that time, there was a big push for the Federal DREAM Act. But a lot of them talked about their experiences in high school and how um, sometimes they didn't feel comfortable talking to an educator, they felt ashamed, or when they even did reach out to somebody about you know, their future, they didn't get the correct information or the people didn't know. So we said, you know what, let's make a film that would educate students, that would educate their teachers, their guidance counselors, administrators, and, and others as well. It all began with my father came coming here um, when I was about three. Then my mother, my brother and I um, decided to cross the border. Well, my parents decided for us and my mother found uh, a coyote to smuggle us in past the border into the U.S. After the first film, we saw how much of an impact it had. Um, when people watched it, they really wanted to do something. People who were undocumented felt like their stories were being represented, but people who weren't felt more understanding of the realities of being undocumented and wanted to act. When we were filming, there was no such thing as the DACA program, but at the end of the film, Obama had announced DACA, and in the, in the very end, you see us saying, so-and-so is applying for DACA, or, or so-and-so didn't qualify for DACA. Five years later, Jeff Sessions comes on and announces the DACA program is winding down. So we thought this is a critical moment and almost like bookend moment. So we thought, you know what, let's see if the people in the first film would be interested in continuing to share their stories. So we were very fortunate that three people, um, Jung Min, Irving, and Jackie all agreed. Um, two of them qualified for DACA and were able to benefit from it and Jung Min was not. So we wanted to tell, continue to tell their stories and so people could see how a program has such an impact on people, on the people that it includes and the people that it leaves out. That was just a very enlightening experience, being able to go back to Mexico and being able to reconnect with my roots and being able to see where I came from. It's been great to be part of this film and try to be part of this movement, the DREAM Act movement. And I think that my involvement was to help push immigration along. And we talk about the DREAM Act and DACA, and unfortunately I'm not part of that right now, but I think, I think we have to focus more on the whole system, the immigration system, so that I, I hope that our parents can be beneficiaries of certain changes in the future. People will always ask me why I do this. You know, my mom will always say, you know, just let the next Korean person, if they want to do it. And I always thought, for me, for other people, you know, those who have psychosocial issues about depression, suicide, I want to think about them. I think we lost so many people over the years. You know, it's great if I got married, it's great if I had DACA and blah, blah, blah. But I hope that they could follow my lead a little bit and say, okay, you know, 
maybe we shouldn't sweep this under the rug and that we could actually work together. Because it has to be more than just telling our stories, which we've done so many times. We've done so many video articles and newspaper articles, radio interviews. It has to be more than that. We also wanted to include the City College Dream Team to highlight that that group as a space for student organizing because really that's what led to DACA is the voices of so many undocumented people across the country. I knew that um, I looked different um, and that we come from different backgrounds and different religions and different cultures, but I think that's the point of the Dream Team. Personally, being part of the dream team was something that really sparked a lot of uh, being able to find a lot of resources, uh, pro connecting with professors who really cared about your education and who were constantly checking in on me, constantly telling me about different resources and different things that were out there. So I think the, the fact that CUNY hosts that type of environment for teams such as the Dream Team to exist um, was something that definitely changed. I don't know if it changed my career path, but definitely pushed me forward in the career path that I wanted. I never thought that I would, you know, would become something that would benefit us. I always doubted the system. So when that happened and I saw old how my life changed and it was thanks to all these people that were marching, that were doing something, that were advocating for that. You know, and what did I do? I never did anything. So I said, no, I have to do something.